A good morning to every one of us and happy Sabbath. I uh, would like to welcome you to the lesson discussion today. And those of us who are in the sanctuary, I would like just to direct you that I will be required to join in the discussions uh, within the groups uh, to just progress with the same. And I would also like to welcome the online community. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And we are very, very delighted to have you with us this wonderful Sabbath. Uh, we are coming to you live from the New Life Seventh-day Adventist here at uh, Fifth Ngong Avenue. Um, and uh, I would just like to have a word of prayer uh, before we can just proceed with the discussion and the lesson for today. And I would like to welcome uh, Elder. Yes. Let's pray. pray. We thank you, our Father and our God, for the gift of the Sabbath, the gift of life, and above all, the gift of salvation. This morning, Lord, as we gather to discuss your word, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to guide us and counsel us on your ways. Open our hearts and give us the hearts of flesh. We thank you. We adore you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you for for the wonderful prayer uh, just to start us off uh, today and um, probably to just remind the online community. Uh, my name is Irene Jahenda and I'll be the moderator for the lesson discussion today and I'm joined in by my two wonderful brothers and I uh, will just uh, give them a chance and the opportunity to also introduce themselves to you so that we know who are in the discussion. So over to you Elder. Okay, thank you very much, my sister. <clears throat> um, I want to thank God for giving us life this wonderful day. And I see the day is bright, the sun is bright, a sign of a blessing to us. My name is Jared Manyara. I'm a member of this church and an elder in this church. And I'm uh, a panelist today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over to you, Elder. Uh, thank you so much. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. I'm Elder Opere Nyaroya. I'm an elder in this church. And uh, I'm passionate about inspiration or inspiring young people to discover their full potential uh, in the service of God. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, as we are starting, and uh, I believe uh, uh, we've been uh, in this discussion over the past few Sabbaths, of course we started um, the quarter with uh, this wonderful message and this wonderful topic of managing for the master until he comes. And we've been able to just dive in into understanding how for the first lesson, uh, being part of God's family, how are we part of uh, God's family, and we, we were able to progress to God's covenant with us and understanding what are the covenant uh, that is in for us, what are the, are the expectations of us as God's children, and what are the expectations when it comes to God. Uh, and also, it was very, very beautiful that uh, we came to understand within this particular covenant, uh, they are unilateral and uh, bilateral, meaning that they are universal um, blessings that are bestowed on us and they are blessings that we, we have to take a role in order for also God to take to take up his task and uh, some of these covenants we were able to dive in last Sabbath and uh, came to understand that we have the covenant of uh, salvation we have the covenant of um, of the blessing of God and also we have the covenant of tithing and how are we exactly as children of God honoring God because that is the main main uh, task and responsibility we have as his children and for this particular Sabbath we are moving on to the tithing contract or the tithing covenant and just getting to understand exactly um, what is our expectation when it comes to tithing as Christians, as children of God. I don't know, Elder Manyara, you can just uh, tell us as we start this particular lesson, what are your expectations? Are you excited about this topic? Very much. You know, as a manager of God's blessings and God's resources. 
In fact, I'm so happy about today's topic. Reason being, this is the first responsibility of God's resources that I am assigned. And today I am going to learn, as we learn all of us, how we are going to manage this very first part of all the resources that God gives us. And you know, <clears throat> they say, uh, when you start well, you always end well. So uh, I'm so happy about the tithing because it all tells me about placing God first. Not anything else, but God first. Because he's the owner of the resources as we have learned earlier. And since he has given us the resources, we consider him first. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Moby. Um, uh, we can just, uh, as we are starting the, the discussion on the tithing contract, I would like us to read from the book of um, Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. And it says, um, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will be no room enough to receive it. Um, Elder Opere, last Sabbath, we were talking about tapping into God's blessings and uh, having these blessings overflow in us until they overtake us. You can remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, as we are getting more into this particular discussion and just understanding uh, that the Lord is telling us, uh, let's try him in this. And probably we can just start from there. Um, we, we are being reminded by Malachi in the Bible about tithing. And we want to understand uh, what, what, what is tithe? I mean, what percentage is it? Is it half of what I, I get as an income? What, what exactly is the percentage uh, expected of me in terms of honoring God? Thank you so much. I think, uh, like you rightfully brought it, that we looked at the covenant. And we looked at the covenant of salvation and the covenant, the contract of tithing. And I'm happy that we are looking at it even more deeply because we found a very big correlation <coughs> about loyalty and obedience uh, in the lives of the children of Israel during the time of Hezekiah and tithe giving. And we found out that when we are obedient to God, you, it will be reflected in how we manage things for him. It will be reflected in how we manage even our bodies, the things which are entrusted into our hands, starting from our own bodies, what we eat, what we dress, and even giving uh, to God. Now, when we are talking of, like uh, you, you said, we looked at Deuteronomy 28, that these blessings shall overtake us. And today Malachi is saying, Another interesting thing which has also struck me and which I want to leave in that dispensation in verse 10, the last part, that and pour out for you such blessing that there will be not be room enough to receive it. It means we have been living in dispensation where blessings are just trickling. The rooms are not even full to give them. We need to live in a dispensation where it is too much that there is no room to keep them. Where we, it means we have so much. Now, you've asked truly what therefore is tithe. The Bible uh, gives us an answer. When we come to the book, uh, to the Bible, with the first time we hear of the word tithe, it is in the book of Genesis. We get it in the book of Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, the word tithe. We, we meet of it in the book of Genesis, chapter 14, verse 20. That is where, I don't know if you've gotten it, you can read if you've gotten it. Um, Genesis, chapter 14, verse 20, um, where it talks of Abraham gave a tithe, uh, gave Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God, a tithe of all the spoils of Sodom, which he and his allies had retaken. So, 
when we meet the word tithe there, but then when you come again to the book of Leviticus, we get this one was mentioned much earlier. This one, this word tithe came, this word was given much earlier. It was more than 400 years before these words were written by Moses in Sinai. Wow. So this was around 400 years before Moses now actually wrote them in Mount Sinai when it was being given the ordinance of God. Mm -hmm. So it gives us that the, the word, the history, it was so much early, it came too early. Mm -hmm. But the point here is a tithe is being described as a tenth, mm -hmm. a, tenth a tenth of all that we have, 10 percent yes. or a tenth of what we have. Hebrews later talks of it, but now in reality, the seven talks of. But where we get the word tithe as a tenth, we first of all get it in uh, Genesis chapter 14. We also later get it in Genesis chapter 28, when Jacob was giving, uh, after seeing the hands of God, yes. the doings of the Lord, he made a vow that he would give a tenth of all that God shall have given him if God protected him. And let me say that Jacob was not attempting to buy God's favor. He was simply responding to the promises God had already made to him. An example to believers in all ages that this young man begins his journey through life by taking God as his partner. So the point I'm trying to say, tithe is 10% wow. of all that we, God has given us. It is the increment, it can be the increment from the garden, mm -hmm. from the soil, mm -hmm. the increment from the uh, herd and flocks, mm -hmm. and also increment of any other earnings or additionals which God has given us. So that is what tithe is. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elder Pere, in terms of enabling us to understand uh, what is a tithe and exactly what percentage is it. And um, I'm thinking uh, just from uh, your explanation and uh, my understanding is coming out in terms of uh, it's not necessarily just your income. And um, it could be in form of harvest. I don't know if Elder Manyara is actually um, concurring with this particular um, revelation that is coming out in terms of what is tithe, in terms of if I bring in uh, my harvest, if I bring in uh, probably I have um, doing poultry farming and I bring in my chicken as part of my harvest, is this considered as tithe? And also when it comes to um, offering the tithe, uh, how exactly should it be? Should I take that small chicken when I'm bringing to the to the to the sanctuary, or should I take the best? Or how is it? How is your understanding around this? Please unpack for us. Okay, thank you, sister. Uh, <clears throat> when we talk about tithe, actually, most of the modern people like us, who are in employment or who are in business, what we normally get is money, and that is what we tithe. But uh, I can't remember when I was young, uh, money was very rare. <laughs> yes, I, I could even see people doing butter trade. Yeah, someone going to buy some maize takes a chicken <laughs> and the exchange. So during that time, <clears throat> this is what I observed uh, my parents and other church members doing. Uh, if their cows increase and get to 10, they pick one cow and give us tithe. When we harvested crops like maize, we used to measure as we were put them into the storehouse eh? or the barn. We could count baskets. The 10th basket was put aside and it belonged to God. And I remember my parents instructing me that even when we are choosing the maize corpse, it should not have any spot. It must be clean because we are not giving God 
the second best but we must give him the first best you can also even if you are growing even trees you can count the trees one two three the tenth one you give it to god i remember even in terms of uh, tithes and offerings on sabbath we could carry maize cups some people could carry uh, chicken eggs S some people could even take uh, chicken themselves so it is all <coughs> that God has given us not specifically the money even even apart from uh, the other resources God has given us God has also given us time in fact we are supposed to set aside time for God because time does not belong to us it has been given to us by God to use it as per his instructions thank you very much sister uh, thank you so much for that. I mean, um, getting to understand that it is not only the income, but whatever the Lord has blessed us with. And this could be in terms of time. It could be in terms of your talent. How are you honoring God and uh, just giving it back to God in terms of, Lord, I am entrusting you with this. And uh, for the rest, as the Bible puts it to us, that the Lord is going to bless the 90% of it. And um, as we are progressing on, and uh, we've just been able to tackle the Sunday part, and uh, we are moving on to the Monday part. And... Um, I believe as believers uh, we've come to to, to the house of God and we are honoring our tithes. We, we, we are giving the 10% and uh, we would like to understand where does this 10% actually go to? What is the storehouse uh, for this particular tithe that we are giving and honoring God with? And uh, Elder, Elder Opere, you can just unpack for us and help us understand where is this tithe going to? Uh, thank you. <clears throat> that is a big question. Where do we take it? Because today, uh, my sister, uh, uh, you, uh, you may be shocked that uh, there is, um, you hear Opere as a church. <laughs> or somebody has his own, <clears throat> an, own church. So the question which baffles is, where do we take the, the tithe? But there is this text in Psalms which says, I rejoiced when they told me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Yeah. The question is, where is this Nyumbani Kwababa? The Bible tells us in the book of Malachi chapter 3 that bring the tithe into uh, the storehouse. I think you had read it. Bring, uh, yes, it says... Bring all the tithes yes. into the storehouse, that there may be food in okay. my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. So, w the Bible tells us where to take the tithe. Yes. It is to be taken to the God's storehouse. Mm -hmm. Where is God's storehouse? It is his house. Now, where is God's house? From the biblical times, we've seen... When you move through the Bible, yes. where the storehouse is or where God's house is. Mm -hmm. In the Abrahamic times, they would, whenever they would move, when you leave the story of Abraham, when he was called from the land of Ur mm -hmm. to the land of the Chaldees, the, the Ur of the Chaldees to the promised land, which he didn't know, mm -hmm. wherever he would reach a place, he would erect an altar maybe putting stones of remembrance and call that place the house of God. The same is happening even with Jacob in chapter 28 when he puts a place which he dedicates praise and then he says, Kumbe, I was in the, I was in the house of God, Peniel. Mm -hmm. Then as we moved, we came to the time now when the ark uh, God says, build me a house, sanctuary, that I may de dwell amongst you. Mm -hmm. Now they had a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It moved until we had the time of the temple, until the modern day times, the church. So, the storehouse of God. Malachi says, bring the tithe to the storehouse of God, that there may be food in my house. So where is the storehouse? It is the house of God, the church. Yes. Or oh, it is a church place where 
Now, this tithe can be used for the glory of God. It is what we call the storehouse. It was to be taken to the house of worship. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 5 to 14, the, the picks that it was to be taken to the house of worship. The house of worship today, my dear, dedicated for the name of God, is the church. It's the church. I know some people will come with a lot of things because right now I can start my own. I can people t tend to dilute. Oh, oh. But that does dilute the sense of the house of God. But that itself does not dismiss the fact that tithe is to be taken to the house of God, dedicated for his name. Before we go ahead, what it was to be used for, yes. the place the Bible has defined to us from the Abrahamic times coming all along, it was a place dedicated for the worship and the glory of God's name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay, Elder thank you, Perry. sister. Yes. I, 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 uh, there's something uh, I, I found very interesting in the uh, book that uh, Elder has mentioned, yes, Deuteronomy Elder. chapter 12, verse 5 to 14. Mm -hmm. God was very specific and he gave statutes and judgments mm -hmm. which the Israelites were to observe mm -hmm. yeah, and do in the land which the Lord had given them. Mm -hmm. If you look at verse 6, yes. actually from verse 5, you find that God is saying, but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the storehouse, it is the place God chooses. Amen. It is not where we choose mm -hmm. as what? <laughs> as, as, as children as of God. Mm -hmm. The same thing is reported in uh, verse, um, verse for 14, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Then something so interesting, <clears throat> verse 8. Uh, it says, ye shall not do after all these things that we do here this day, every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. I, I have come across people saying this. Um, I can take my tithe and give it to the poor. I can take my tithe and use it this way. So we, it is not our discretion to use it as we wish. It is very specific. God has designated his storehouse, as uh, Elder Oper has mentioned, and it is his house. And you find even when he was instructing the Israelites to build a sanctuary, in Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, let them build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So you may take your tithe, if you are not taking to God's house, you are taking to a place where God does not dwell. Thank you very much. And that is very true in terms of um, understanding that um, I'm taking it to God. And you find that uh, during these recent times, we have different ways of tithing. And we have even the online community, uh, the viewers who are able to channel in their tithe uh, by online giving. And you understand that with this, um, you can find yourself in a situation and say, um, this tithe, uh, I don't know where it goes. Uh, someone is misappropriating uh, the, the tithe, and I'm, I am withholding. I'm not giving it. So, Elder, I don't know for someone who's in such a situation, uh, maybe they are giving online, and they feel, or they're in, in the sanctuary, and they feel, Apana, this, this one I'm not giving because I feel these funds are not being used well because we are bringing them to the church, but we are not seeing it. So how, how would you actually um, address this kind of uh, feeling within believers? Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, interestingly, God has given us responsibilities. <laughs> That's the most beautiful thing. God has given me the responsibility of giving. I give. If someone else misappropriates, he has accountability before God. He has to account before God. I will not be the one accounting for the misappropriation. I will have done my bit. 
and actually we are going to see it on Thursday about faithfulness. You do your part, forget about the other one. But <clears throat> to be very direct, I want to share with us what another sister in church shared with me that shocked me. She takes her tithe, kneels down, prays over the tithe that when it go, gets to the storehouse it will be used for the purpose for which God has designated. So, what do we learn from this sister? What we learn is that <clears throat> it is not even just giving. We need to commit really this tithe to God that he may do what? He may ensure that it's not misappropriated. Because whoever you are giving to and thinking that you will misappropriate is a creature that God created. And God will take charge of that person to ensure that the tithe does the work which it is supposed to do. But in case of any misappropriation, let us not worry about that. Let us do our honest part and leave the rest to God. God is not asleep. He sees what we are doing and he will follow it up to ensure that it is done the way it is supposed to be done. Remember, even during Jesus' time, Judas used to misappropriate <laughs> the man that used to go to the treasury. Yeah? But Jesus took care of that situation. So let's not stop giving because we think someone is going to do what? To misappropriate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elder. And uh, I think what's coming out clearly is the fact that we need to honor God with that particular part and give it, give our tithe, honor your tithe. And uh, when it comes to the other parts, everyone has their responsibilities and in ensuring that the tithe has done um, what it was intended to do and the purpose which it was intended to, to give. And I really love the aspect of uh, uh, the lady. You've just brought in uh, uh, the story of a lady who actually kneels down and prays before giving out the tithe and just being able to dedicate it to God and asking God to enable that particular giving to do um, the purpose which it was intended to do. And I would like to roll it over to Elder Pere just to uh, help us analyze and just see what exactly is the purpose of tithing because there's a lady praying that God as I give let this tithe be able to achieve its intended purpose maybe you can just highlight for us uh, the purpose uh, of tithing uh, thank you so much in the book of Numbers Numbers 18 verse 21 and 24 Numbers yes. 18 verse 21 says these words behold I have given the children <coughs> Of Levi, all the tithes in Israel, as inheritance in return for the work which they perform, the work of the tabernacle of meeting. Mm -hmm. Then, when you go to verse 24, the Bible says, <clears throat> For the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer up as a heave offering to the Lord, I have given to the Levites as an inheritance. Therefore, I have said to them, among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. We know when the, the promised land was being divided, the children of Levi were not given inheritance. The reason is they were dedicated to the sanctuary services. And that one came during that day when Moses came from the mountain yes. and found, found people... Uh, apostating with the, the, the golden calves. It was the children of Levi who distinguished themselves on the side of the Lord. Yes. And that is when they were assigned the duty to the Levitical order, what we call the Levitical order, to serve in the what? In the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And so they did not get the physical inheritance in terms of lands and all that. And so they were dedicated to work um, uh, to do the sanctuary service. Mm -hmm. Now, for that sanctuary service to be performed, 
you know the sanctuary service uh, were a lot people coming with their sacrifices or offerings goods and all that to be sa sacrificed these ones were the people to do it and so this one was their a portion to help them and go along today somebody will ask now who are the levites of course we know we have pastors and ministers dedicated solely to the work of god to which you call the ecclesiastical order members of the ecclesiastical order yes. pastors people who dedicate their lives to the sanctuary service they they have no other business they, that is the work they do they ensure that the churches are running the uh, the schools are running the hospitals our hospitals are running the pastoral work is going on people are visited they are prayed for all these are going on today in our today's uh, establishment these are the members of the levitical order they are the ones who are supposed to be paid by this tithe because tithe was meant to support the work of the levitical order in the sanctuary and so in today's uh, modern times it is the pastors and the people administrators dealing with the sanctuary or the uh, the church work in its day-to-day -day running for the salvation and for the salvation of this uh, the uh, people of to, uh, to bring people to the service of God thank you uh, thank you so my, my much my sister I want to add something yes eh? please yes please elder uh, 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 elder Opera has reminded me something very interesting eh? uh, many times people ask why should I give my money to be eaten by the pastor <laughs> <laughs> who do you want to eat even in the new testament uh -huh. there are no explicit commands for people to bring tithe mm -hmm. but <clears throat> we forget that the old testament was fulfilled in the new what? testament they are not separate things the Bible is one. It's a continuation from mm -hmm. the Old Testament. And now Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter four, chapter 9, <coughs> verse 14. Even so has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Amen. So <coughs> those who are in the house of God will have to be fed in the house of where? In the house of God. You cannot ignore that. <clears throat> because sometimes <clears throat> we need this service. In fact, most of the time we need this service, especially the pastoral services. And that's where God ordained the Levites to be in the sanctuary. Right now, he has ordained that we have the ministers of the gospel in the church if we need prayers if we need a service yeah spiritual service these people are available on demand and that's where you find when we have a visitation someone is sick when we have uh, someone is bereaved and we want to have uh, a, a church service you always find the pastor available i want us to imagine a situation where a, a pastor is like engineer Opere, is in the office we want to want to pray for someone in the hospital and is chairing a meeting what will happen we will have to delay probably the work becomes too much and it's not even available that day up to the following day but you see it is so easy in this system that God has ordained that we have these ministers and they are available and that is why God has said that they should live of the gospel in fact some Bible versions say those who preach the gospel should eat <laughs> they should do what should eat, eat of the gospel so it is God's desire 
coming in and I would like to, uh, just for all of us to have an understanding um, is it uh, supposed to be uh, the tithe coming from the net income that you're receiving or is it supposed to be coming from the gross income that you're receiving probably uh, many of us are actually asking uh, the same question our viewers um, uh, wherever they are watching us from they could be having this particular question should it be on the net or on the gross income uh, thank you very much a very challenging question <clears throat> and uh, it is a question and a concern that has been there for many 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 years from the time I was growing up. In fact, I remember when we used to have uh, Bible studies, there used to be several arguments <coughs> uh, on whether we should tithe on gross or, or net income. But um, with much prayer and with, with much study, there is one thing <coughs> I discovered. That <coughs> What you receive belongs to you. Or what is assigned to you. Like now, uh, I'm an employee. And I know many people are employees. In your pay slip, you find there's a basic salary. There's a house allowance. Maybe transport allowance. Maybe extraneous allowance. Several things. And then they say gross salary. <laughs> that belongs to who? To you. Once you have that gross salary, then you find their deductions that come. Like now you have to subscribe to NSSF, maybe NHF, maybe pension scheme. Pay, pay as you earn. These are taxes you are giving to the government. It is you giving. And actually, every year, like here in Kenya, we must do what? File tax returns, what you pay to the government. Even though it was detected at source, you must say what you gave. So that means even that tax belongs to, to you. So what belongs to you is the gross income despite the fact that there are what deductions which are statutory and there are also deductions which are personal like now when you take a loan so we tithe on that which is gross the total that we receive not on the net why because if you tithe on the net that means your tithe is not perfect it's not full and God will not accept what is not what? That is not what full. is not full. <coughs> so, uh, it is God's government that we give a perfect tithe. And that is why it required even the sacrifices. You give an animal without what? Blemish. So when you tithe on net, you are giving tithe which is, a uh, as, is having a blemish. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Elder, in terms of just enabling us to understand from, from where should we be tithing from. And um, I would just like to, of course, welcome uh, the online viewers who are joining us and uh, encourage you just to be able to ask your questions, let your questions come in, and the panel will be able to answer them. Uh, we are tackling the lesson for this week, the tithing contract, and we've been able to cover uh, the Sunday part in understanding what is tithe exactly. We moved on to where does this tithe go to, what is the storehouse um, for tithing, and uh, what do we use the tithe for, what is the purpose of tithe? Thing. This has informed the Tuesday part and we are currently just on uh, the Wednesday part in terms of uh, getting to understand uh, when tithing, should it be on the gross or net income and we'll just like to indulge Elder Opere in terms just, of... Sister, just before yes. Elder Opere comes and I yes. just remember there's something I, I didn't pick out. Mm -hmm. What about those who are in business? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they want to tithe. Yes on the total sales mm -hmm. or on the profits 
Now, when in business, there's a difference. They say cost you in car in third business. So, third cost must be deducted from the total sales. So, what you tithe is on the profit third you get from your business. You take the total sales, subtract the cost you incurred, and then you tithe on the profit. Because that is now what belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Because the cost will have gone to meet the requirements for the business. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for highlighting that aspect. That when it comes to business, things are they're a bit different. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've just clarified to us in exactly how we should undertake and um, uh, handle the situation when you're in business. And you want to honor God as he's the one who's given you the blessing uh, of the business and the blessing of the profits. And uh, probably Elder Pere, I will, there are members, there are believers who actually do not tithe. They don't do the tithing. And um, I would just like uh, for you to help us understand, if at all you're not doing tithing, uh, what exactly are you missing out on? Uh, because on this other side, we are looking at the blessings of God being bestowed on, on, on the honor given through tithe. So what happens to someone who's not tithing? Thank you, my sister. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, like you're putting it, <coughs> it is true. Elder said, we tithe on the gross. That is very right. Uh, because if you reason that, but this one, the government is taking whether I like it or not. But the government is taking it because it is your obligation. It is your obligation. You give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So why don't you also, and many a times th those statutory deductions, some of them are for, their, our, they are for our benefit. Because when you are paying the tax, you are paying it for you to be getting services. So, why do you want to assume that you should not give God? And if it is the NSSF, it there for our benefit. So, ideally, I concur that we should give on the gross. I know a question come <coughs> again, which I have also under, uh, uh, gotten. What about if I take a loan? Do I tithe on loan? But before I come to that, let me respond to what you're saying. To those people who are not giving, the Bible is explicit that... When we give, it also enhances our relationship with God. Actually, tithe cures gluttony and greed. God intended us to give tithe. And it is one way which God intends to cure gluttony and greed from us. Naturally, we are greedy. Naturally, we go for self. But God wants to cure that. So that we can also love God and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Because the first love is for self, which is not wrong. But God wants us to love him first and love him first and then also love our neighbors. One of the ways to cure that gluttony and greed is through tithing. And so when we do not give tithing we are detaching ourselves from cultivating a relationship of selflessness we are we we are injuring ourselves from the opportunity to enjoy the blessings of god because god has promised and it is repeated over and again that this is the only text where god has said test me we test him beloved and it says in maklakai 310 that that um, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the lord of hosts if i will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Like I said, we are living many a times in rooms which are not filled with a blessing. But I think we need, now need to live in rooms which are filled beyond that we have no place to, to keep it. 
we need to live in a dispensation where the blessings overtake us, not drilling us. Where, not, where they are not trickling. Where we, are, we need to live in a dispensation where there are floodgates. Floodgates, not trickling. All the sh we need to live in the dispensation where blessings are in flood, coming in flood type. Now the point, another point. So the point I'm saying, when people are not giving tithe, they are disadvantaging themselves from cultivating a selfless relationship with God. They are denying themselves from, we deny ourselves opportunity to enjoy the blessings of God. The Bible has said, you eat but are not satisfied. You put things in your pocket but they disappear. The reason is, when we do not have, give tithe and have cultivate that relationship, God has said, why will we, will we have that floodgate? He will rebuke the devourer with Satan. He will rebuke it. He will rebuke that. Where uh, rust and the thieves, when we keep there, there will, be no, well, there will be no thieves and rust. You know the rust and you know the thieves. The devourer whom God will rebuke. He will rebuke Satan in, in, of, instead of bringing things like diseases, unnecessary things which will make our money do not, not to be satisfactory to us. God will, um, God will rebuke that. God will take care of that. Things which make our money just go until we have no, no, no you don't see anything substantial. God will rebuke. So when we do not give, we are opening ourselves to the danger of the devourer. So the only way to inoculate, to ensure ourselves against the devourer, against the, the, the rust, against the moth, is to give to God. But above all, to cultivate a relationship with God. Wow. wow. How beautiful is that uh, in terms of just uh, tithing being a way of building a relationship with God and I can also understand because I'm also in the process of learning mm -hmm. that even that as you give your tithe it's a form of protecting the blessings that God has bestowed on you yes. instead of releasing it and leaving it for the enemy to, to actually devour and that uh, actually motivates us just to, to be faithful. That and is in verse 11, my sister. Honest tithe. Yes, yeah, verse 11, it says, And I will yes. rebuke the devourer mm -hmm. for your sake, mm -hmm. so that the, he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, mm -hmm. nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. You know, even when you plant, I saw in the Facebook, somebody in a poultry farm, all the birds, around 780 birds, mm -hmm. had died. You saw such, such kind of things. We, it does not mean they will not happen. They may happen. But God will protect even your animals. Mm -hmm. your, 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 it is the, one, is the one who actually protects them. Your poultry, your yes. farm, your mango trees, whichever they are. is the one who makes them to grow. Yes. We have these moths which come and eat them. God is the one who will put a break to them. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow, and I, I was just um, saying in terms of uh, this is actually a motivation for us as believers to be faithful and honest in our tithing when it comes to even the amount and when it comes to where are you taking it? Are you taking it to the storehouse and the house of God? Are you honoring God with the first part of your, of your income, of your harvest? And um, it brings in that element of faithfulness in our giving and uh, just as Elder Manyara, you're able to highlight that it is for us to honor him and bring it to the, to the, to the house of God and uh, for the tithe also to be used um, in accordance to its intended purpose and uh, giving back uh, to God. And uh, it has been highlighted that it is our responsibility that the first three, when it comes to the amount, when it comes to bringing it to the storehouse, when it comes to honoring God with the first part, that is on us. But when it comes to the tithing being used for the right purpose, then it is upon another person and uh, responsibility bestowed another, to another person. And I would just like to... to put a question to you in terms of honoring God 
with our tithing and um, being honest with our tithing as this is forming the, the Thursday particular lesson in terms of understanding honesty, faithfulness with our tithing. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, if you look at the Wednesday part, mm -hmm. they start widow of Sarifath. Mm -hmm. I want to pick it from there. Ah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This is how we can understand faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And Lobel talked about loans. Mm -hmm. Yeah? We, we take loans and then uh, something remains. And you find that what remains is so small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so small that if you tithe, what remains might not even pay your rent. So what do you do? Should you give? Sometimes we say God understands. I need to pay rent. So let's the tithe wait a bit. Now, if you look at this widow of Sarifath, mm -hmm. she was in a similar situation where we find ourselves when we take loans. Mm -hmm. Her, she didn't take loan because it was because of the drought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Elijah comes. She has very little flour and very little what? Oil. Mm -hmm. And this flour and oil were enough for her and the her son. Yes. Not anybody else. Mm -mm. Now, <laughs> a third party comes. <laughs> and now he's trying to Put his hand in that little that is there for you and your son. The man <coughs> of God tells her, do not be afraid and do as you have said, but make me a small case. Do as you have said. What does, did she say? Making something for herself and her son. Yes, yes do it. <laughs> that one is allowed. But make me a small cake from meat first. <laughs> now, this is even making matters worse. Mm -hmm. Why don't you allow us eat first? Mm -hmm. Then we make for you. Mm -hmm. Make for you. The man of God said, For me, first. And bring it to me. <laughs> After making it, don't just place it there. Bring it to the man of God. Yes. Uh -huh. And what follows? And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. Mm -hmm. Amazing, eh? Mm -hmm. For thus says the Lord. Yes. The bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Uh, for you to do that which Elijah is saying it will take the faith mm -hmm. in God mm -hmm. that if I do this to the man of God yeah. then <coughs> God's blessing will be upon me as he has promised yes. <coughs> and sometimes we find that we have so little that we even fear giving tithe but we can see from this lady that she, she had faith that God will fulfill his what? His promise. <clears throat> now, who are the current Elijahs? <laughs> Our pastors and the ministers of the gospel. Yes. So, we are challenged to make a small cake. Mm -hmm. Actually, God is so gracious. Mm -hmm. A tenth of all the increase mm -hmm. he has given us, then he asks for what? A tenth. And if you, ask, you look at Elijah, he's saying, uh, make for me a small don't make a big one eh? no big. a small I don't know whether that could satisfy his hunger mm -hmm. but he asked for what and that is the same thing that the Lord asks us mm -hmm. give that small what small bit mm -hmm. the tenth of it so we are required to be faithful stewards yeah. as we find in 1st Corinthians chapter 4 verses one and two and faithfulness means two things mm -hmm. the giver and those who handle the tithe mm -hmm. for those who give like us mm -hmm. we must be faithful in the amount we give mm -hmm. which is 10 
10 percent. Number two, take it where it is supposed to be taken. Yes. Storehouse mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Number three, we must honor God with the first part. Okay. That's why you see Elijah say, make for me fast. Yes. Because that is honoring God. Yes. Then now, on the part of those who receive the tithe in the storehouse, they must use it for the right purpose. Yes. So this money must not be used for another thing, yes. but to support the gospel ministry. Yes. And if we do that, God will consider us to be faithful servants. If we can remember the parable of the talents mm -hmm. in Matthew chapter 25, you realize <clears throat> In verse uh, 21 and 23. Yes. For the one who was given five talents and brought in five more. And the one who was given two and brought two more. God says this. Mm -hmm. I think I need to read this. In verse 21. Mm -hmm. The Lord says to the one who gave. Uh, who brought in five more. The Lord said unto him. Well done. Thou good and faithful what? Servant. Servant. <coughs> Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Mm -hmm. I will make thee ruler of many things. Mm -hmm. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Mm -hmm. The same words I repeated for those, for that person who brought in two more what? Talents. This tells us <coughs> that in our giving of tithe, it may not be equal amount. It will be on the basis of the blessings that we have received from what? From God. But whether someone gives millions, another one thousand, another one hundred, the blessing is the same. So, if you are faithful, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, over a few things, mm -hmm. the ones that God has given you, mm -hmm. the few things is what God has already given you. God will put you a ruler over what? Over many things. Mm -hmm. What are these many things? The many things are the blessings that will flow. The one Elder Berry has been saying that we shouldn't be running after blessings. <laughs> they should overtake us. <laughs> yes. So the many things are the blessings that God bestows on us. And we are required at all costs to be very faithful to God so that God's work can progress mm -hmm. and we can also get the blessings he has promised. Mm -hmm. The blessings he's not going to look for them. He has them. He only says, just knock. Mm -hmm. Just test. Test me. And you will see. Some Bibles say he will open the floodgates yes. so that we are overflown by the blessings. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elder. Um, <coughs> just uh, as he was talking and as we are handling this particular lesson, uh, I was getting the understanding that for tithing, it is, it is a command. Mm. It, it is a rule that you should give 10% um, of it, as we've come to understand, yeah. compared to offering. Actually, there's a difference mm. of tithing and offering and being able to just honor God with the tithing. Uh, that is not at your discretion. You're not uh, allowed to just say, eh, I'll give out this. But it is, it is a set rule that it's a 10% of it. But when it comes to the offering, now that becomes at your discretion. And as we are speaking about giving an honest and faithful tithe, um, probably someone out there could be thinking, uh, what if mine is too little? I'm not able to, to give it or I feel ashamed of giving this. How would you... Um, just be able to address this or address this person who feels that their tithe is actually too little to give, uh, too little to support in terms of just breaking it down and finalizing on uh, being honest and faithful in our tithing. Uh, thank you. Thank mm. you, my sister. Mm. I, I think um, the Bible is very critical and categorical. Mm. To avoid opulence and show, 
In the parables Jesus gave, we saw of the faithful lady who only gave the, the, the scent which she had. And Jesus said she had given much more than any other person, those who gave a lot. So faithfulness is not on the amount. Faithfulness is on account of being honest on what on account of what God has given you. Yes. If you have been given a million, be faithful on that million. Just give a pass a uh, hundred thousand, the ten percent of that million. If you have been given a hundred shillings, give that ten bob. You know, many a times we neglect when we get small monies. We only think now when it is a uh, hundred thousand, that is when now. But this two thousand, three thousand, which we get, we think we, we we seem not to be faithful. We tend to forget. Faithfulness is not on the amount. Faithfulness is on account of what as God has given us. It has been said, when we give the tithe, that is obedience, a demonstration of obedience to God. When we give offerings, that is now trust. We are trusting God that is able to handle it. You know, my dear, something amazes me and it has made me to think. God is only asking for 10% and is able to run the affairs of ministry with the 10% while for us, we remain with 90% and we are struggling. <laughs> you know, you know, it amazes me. You know, it amazes me. That only with only 10% of El Lamanyara, God is able to run all the ecclesiastical missionary work across the globe. <laughs> well, we remain with 90, and of course, even that 90 is still his, but we are struggling with that 90. <laughs> you know, two things I have picked. One, I have picked in the book of Haggai. In Haggai chapter 1, verse 6. From verse 5 he says, Now therefore, thus is the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. The one thing we have to do is to consider our ways. He says, You have sown much and bring in little. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you are not filled with the drink. You clothe yourselves but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put in a bag with holes. You see why we are struggling with the 90. <laughs> Leave alone even the 90. We plant, only get less. We, we, we clothe ourselves, but we still feel cold. We put our wages in a bag, but it has holes. That is why we are being told to consider our ways now and be faithful to God. Lastly, why we have to be faithful and consider, we, we had said it in Malachi chapter 1 from verse 7. Yes. It says, you offer defiled food on my altar, but say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying, the table of the Lord is contemptible, and when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when, uh, and when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept your fav you favorably, says the Lord of hosts. But now, my dear, uh, you see, faithfulness, like Elder Manyara was saying, we have to honor God with our blessings and give God the best. Recently, the president went to South Nyanza, or he went to Luo Nyanza, let me call it so. Did you see the type of fish was given Mbota? The Mbota was given in Omebe. It was... One of the biggest mbota I have ever seen. He was also given a bowl. If you looked at that bowl, it was one of the best bowls as a gift. My friend, the Bible is saying, give, why was he not being given one which is being in a fanyway, in a sukuma isimame, in a weka mbao, wow, poles, the isimame. He was given the best. Now the Bible just draws that analogy in faithfulness. If we are able to give our governors the best, if the mbota the president was given together with the bowl, my friend, 
they were the choicest ones. <laughs> but when it comes to God, even our hands, these fingers, I pray God to train these fingers, especially for men. They really know how to distinguish notes on the back, <laughs> on the back pocket. My friend, they know the texture of a thousand, the texture of five hundred. <laughs> so we want to, we want to give God the remnants. No, God is calling us to be faithful, to give ourselves to Him wholly. That is why cultivating relationship with Him. When we have done that, we will give God the best. That is what faithfulness entails. When we don't give God 10%, then that is not tithing. So we need to learn to give God the best. Lastly, because I know time is up, my dear. Yes. On the issue of loans, I think that one, we will handle it as we go along. Mm -hmm. Because people say, what about if I take this? Personally, I used to tithe my higher education loans board. But I think we will, to our viewers, this is one thing we will... Uh, deal with even in our next episodes in our next uh, studies so they should not you should not miss our viewers should not miss our next lesson thank you truly truly they should not miss and we are having a lot of questions coming in uh, from the viewers uh, who are just watching us and as we are concluding elder i would just like us to probably address um a question from mr kevin mwangi even as um we intend to also um, answer the questions in our next and subsequent discussions. We, we, we are getting to be asked, uh, Mr. Kevin Mwamgi is asking, do we still tithe even when business engagements are involved in making losses? And um, uh, this is to you, Elder, Elder Manyara. And just uh, being able to understand, um, um, I'm just... Uh, are we allowed to actually tithe more than 10%? Mm -hmm. Yes. You, 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 are you allowed to just go over the 10% mark? Or should we just strictly stay within 10 Okay, before I answer that question, <coughs> there's a question you post and uh, tithing on small things. <laughs> tithing on small things. You look at the money you have and you feel like this is too little for God. Uh -huh. I want to give an illustration of our personal experience. One time, I was having a fundraising and uh, I'd invited many people to come and uh, support me. Then, <clears throat> there's this lady. She was a colleague at the workplace. She looked for me in my office, gave me Kenya shillings 100. That's the equivalent $1. 100 shillings. Very small money, by the way, <laughs> by our Kenyan standards. But the heart and the way with which she gave that money, I still remember that lady. There are many friends who gave thousands. But I still remember that lady. Just like the words of Jesus. God is pleased by the honesty with which we give. It is not the amount. Apart from the small things again also, there's also the bigger things. It is easier to tithe when money is average. But again, when it gets to millions, uh, like uh, now you uh, get 100 million. Uh, uh, yeah? Tithing... <laughs> 10 million giving ah, it to God. It is difficult. Ah, you see, God is being unfair here. <laughs> How can I give God all this? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it is all about honesty and faithfulness. And there's also some small monies we get. Sometimes you get a friend, he says, take this money, buy yourself lunch. Mm. Are you supposed to tie on that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is also an income that you have done what? You have received in high school ministry uh, when I participated in that I have encouraged the children to tithe on that which lands in their pockets that's their pocket money they do that now let's get to the question of uh, brother Kevin Mwangi can you tithe when you make a loss in essence you have nothing to tithe <laughs> so you cannot tithe yeah. because you have nothing 
you have already made what? A loss. A loss. What you tithe on is what you have received as income from your business. Hmm. And what is this income? It is what? The profit. And tithing more than 10%. Uh, that is not possible because God is very specific. Mm. A tenth, ten percent. So anything over and above is, offering. is what? Offering. Is offering. an offering. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course there is the principle of the second tithe, yeah. but we will not handle it today. today. We will handle it in the next uh, presentation. Yes. So you cannot tithe on losses and you cannot give more than 10%. Mm. What goes above becomes something else. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I believe uh, this particular uh, discussion and lesson has been very interesting and we could go on and on. And uh, I would just like to um, inform our viewers that uh, we have just uh, finalized and come to the end of this particular lesson. And we are going to delve more even when it comes to the second part, when it comes to offerings, because we should differentiate mm. the tithes and the offerings. And I would like to encourage you just to keep it here for the rest of the Sabbath program and also sorry keep it here for the next sabbath discussion so thank you and uh, it's been delightful to have you here we can have a word of prayer and, uh, okay let's pray yes heavenly father we want to thank you for enlightening us on the tithing contract lord we want to thank you because you have revealed to us what your will is in this particular covenant how we pray, Lord, that you may help us to be very faithful in returning our tithes. The Lord, the gospel ministry can be maintained and sustained and enhanced. For Lord, we know you have told us in your word in Matthew 24, verse 14, that the, this gospel must be preached unto all the world as a witness before the end comes. Lord, we know that the gospel cannot go to the end of the world if we cannot give tithe. Help us that, Lord, we may commit to this task that, Lord, the end, <coughs> the message will reach to the ends of the earth that we may be able to hasten your coming. And, Lord, we pray that you continue being with us as we continue learning and studying at your feet until we come to the end of the Sabbath that, Lord, all of us will say we have been blessed because we have been at the feet of Jesus. Let your will be done this day for this humble prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much.